on. Welcome, everybody. I've got a special guest with me here today on an episode of Scraps of Memories. It's Ebony Scarface, our recent 1v1 tournament victor. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the 1v1 tournament and some other interesting tidbits about him today. So welcome, Ebony. What's up, man? And uh, let's start with a, a fairly easy one. I ask most people this one, uh, at least for the first interview. How did you end up with your gamer tag? Uh, this is actually my own brother's profile. He don't play video games anymore, so it was his. Okay. And uh, how did you first get into Phantom Dust? Uh, same brother whose profile this is. He bought the game, like, I guess 10 years ago, whenever it first came out. Okay. And so back then, did you play under a different gamer tag with him? or? Uh, no, we didn't have internet back then. Okay. Only played split screen. I see. So you didn't play in the original Xbox days at all? No. Wow, interesting. Not, not online. Not on, not online, anyway. Not online. And uh, I guess before then, whenever you played split screen, did you have a particular play style that you favored? Uh, no, nah, just the, the same stuff that everybody else run. You know, I didn't run recalls back then. I just ran the regular stuff. Okay. Very interesting. I had no idea that you hadn't played... Uh, in the original Phantom Dust, really, you just kind of played the single player. No, I was probably like 10 years old when it first came out. Okay, and how old are you now? I just turned 23. 23. Well, very interesting, and congratulations. Uh, perhaps an even more impressive feat that you won the tournament, considering you didn't play competitively or online uh, back in the day. Nope. So uh, I guess let's break into the 1v1 tournament that just went down then. Um, so as I went on about in our promo video that we had for the 1v1 tournament, we made a little video you might have seen. The 1v1 kind of leaves no doubt about individual skills and Phantom Dust. So with that in mind, how does it feel having won it? Oh, uh, to be honest, I'm just glad it is over, man. You know, I don't really like 1v1 like that. I'd rather play tag team, which everyone knows that about me. I prefer a tag team over 1v1. Uh, and yet you were so dominant in the 1v1. What is it that uh, makes you prefer a tag team over the 1v1 then? Uh, the pressure, you know, the lack of pressure in the 1v1, you know. It's um, it's very frustrating when you're playing the 1v1, you know. you about to win the match, and your opponent, he wants to run away from you. You can't touch him. You can't damage him. I just don't like that, being in that situation. So, I, mean, and, <laughs> I find yeah, that you know, especially it's, ironic <laughs> coming from you. <laughs> you know, in, in tag team, it's always that pressure. Not all the time, but for the most part, it's always pressure. Somebody's always making a move. Well, I have to say, at least for myself, I prefer tag team as well. I do like the place that the 1v1 holds. I feel like it does bring something you know, unique and fun to the table as well. Um, I, I think that most people going into the tournament, I would have to go back and, you know, double check to verify in a lot of the podcasts. But most of the people appearing in the podcast wouldn't have really pegged you as a finalist or winner. I think most people would have said, you know, Ebony will perform well and likely advance from groups. But what did you think of yourself going in? Did you think of yourself as a, a contender for the finalist, or did you were you surprised at how well you did? Uh, not really. I mean, I, th I thought I had a good chance of winning. Uh, maybe not the finals, but I know I was pretty good at 1v1 because I played 1v1 like multiple times before the tournament. And, you know, I had plenty of practice, and I knew my style was kind of like – it was kind of good for 1v1. I mean, it's good for tag team and 1v1, but it's very good for 1v1. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, I guess let's talk about that, the build, the style that took you through 95% of the tournament. I know a lot of people are still interested in knowing more about that. Uh, so I guess the place to start is, you know, what made you decide on that style specifically? Oh, well, like I said earlier, you know, it's frustrating playing, you know, in a 1v1 and, you know, your, your opponent's running around, you can't touch them or whatever. You have the game in your hands, but you just can't finish it. So just playing 1v1s, multiple 1v1s before the tournament, I just kind of knew, like, to be prepared for that, uh, for that you know, situation. So that's why I put the um, stuff like violent changes in there, corner of the case. It's kind of like to stop my opponent from, like, running around and trying to, like, trap him or whatever. Well, that makes sense. Uh, you know, violent change. 
I was long a, a proponent of using, you know, a, a kind of one or two violent changes in any faith deck when it came to 1v1, just so you, ha- so you had that win condition in the background, but you took it to yeah. a whole new level with the recalls and such. Um, how many iterations of that arsenal did you go through before you got, you know, kind of the right formula down? Uh, took a lot of losing, man. That's what I know. Um, I know I edited a lot of times, but like I said, um... You learn from losing, so um, when I first started experiment with the recalls, it was Savage Sim was the one who kind of put me on to it. Um, I'm not sure if y'all remember or not, but back in the day, well, back when the game first came out, me and Savage, we would like kind of like spam everybody with like quantum, quantum amps, and we just like keep recalling them, and then we just like do um, one hit cycle burst. So we kind of would just like spam the recall quantum amp thing. But you know, after everyone figured that out, I had to stop it or whatever, I kind of started experimenting other ways to use the recalls. You know, and it wasn't just like violent change recall. I mean, I got laser recalls. I got, I got all type of decks that have recalls in them. Like every deck has um a different goal of winning. Like everyone says, oh, it's the recall every time. It's the same deck. It's not the same deck every time. You know, every deck has a different strategy for winning, even though they all have recalls in them. Okay. Interesting. And so, I mean, when it came down to it, um, you know, I've tested it. I ran it myself. Uh, and I tried to make my own versions first. I made my own versions. They just they didn't work. Um, but whenever I made it, skill for skill, the way you were making them, um, it just kind of came out in this odd, special way where it, it worked. Uh, I was getting better starts with your build than I did with similar builds that just had more aura. Um, it, it's very interesting how you seem to have gotten that formula down. And now that you have it, do you think that style is superior to other 1v1 styles, as some have argued? Um, I mean, I guess it gives you, like, an advantage, you know. You always have that in the background, that option of popping your opponent out. Um, as you see in the Arsenal, um, I do have attacks in there. I even have a heat in there, like, to give me a little extra damage. But, I mean, I have the ability to fight if need be. You could, um, If you recall the match um, between me and Evoker, he um, later reduced entropy on me, so I couldn't do any of the violent changes on highway. But I still managed to kill him with the reincarnation. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they are attacks in there in case I need to um attack. So I, I don't just focus on doing violent change, especially a tag team. You know, if I'm playing a tag team, I'm running that arsenal. I like to hold on to my attack so I help my own partner out. You know, and we saw other players uh, kind of try and take your build and use it themselves. Um, I remember notably Kanye, and I believe there's one or two others that tried it out. Do you think that? Another player could replicate what you do or even surpass it? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you just keep on using it, like, you'll learn from, from using it. Like, I wasn't good at it when I first started. You know, I, I, um, a lot of times I caused my um, team to lose because I was just trying to, like, do recalls and stuff like that. So, I mean, I learned from playing and losing matches that you can't um, – I learned how to perfect it pretty much, you know. At certain times you got to um, save over certain skills. I, certain times you got to, like, just know, know what to um, – know what to save over man so i mean if you play with the style i mean you'll learn how to use it eventually so i mean yeah anybody can learn how to how to, uh, how to use the style so anybody can learn how to use it man okay very interesting because I, I was wondering at least for me what you felt was more impactful versus the other because there's the arsenal build which i think is important but also your execution of said arsenal that i thought was very important um, which do you feel is more important in that, the the build itself or your practice and execution of it? Uh, practice and execution. You gotta know how to, how to um, run it once you have built the arsenal. And like I said, that just comes from playing multiple matches, man. Like I know exactly what to do in any situation. Okay. So anybody who is looking to do it, it comes from the practice and that. And if you are looking to practice the style, don't do it versus me because I'm tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> But it, 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 I think that would be something I would agree on as well, that it probably comes down to the practice, uh, being yeah, able just, to get it down correctly. There's multiple matches, man. So a lot of counters have been kind of floated around to this style uh, throughout the tournament, and we never really saw it lose because you did you know, go a different direction in the finals, which I thought was really interesting as well. But, you know, Reduce Entropy, Quantum Decay, Exhaust, Shatter Diabolical Trick, Change the World, a lot of different things have been thrown out there trying to counter this Recall Violent Change. 
point being, yeah. in, in your opinion, what is the best counter to this strategy, or maybe what gave you the hardest time when you ran it? Hmm. Uh, to be honest, I can't even recall. I mean, I know counters, but I can't recall while I was like ever in the jam during the tournament with the, with the style. <laughs> I mean, as you know, I, mean, I won all my matches, so I mean, besides the one with choices, and um, with that match, I would just say that was, that was just bad luck, man. I mean, like, I would say the game is like three parts, man. You got the technical side, the Arsenal build, and the other the other part is just luck, man. And that day, I didn't have any luck, man. No luck that day. Yeah. I mean, I tried to run everything, but the game just didn't give me the right skills at the right time, man. So, so I mean, when, you, when you played Four Choices the second time in the semifinals, uh, would you just say it was getting better Arsenal draws that made the difference, or was there something else that made the difference in that matchup? Uh, I think it was um my choice of which Arsenal to use on each level. Uh. I ran pretty much the same thing as you saw. I mean, I just ran ran on like different levels or whatever. I used like different builds for different certain levels, and that kind of you know helped me out a little bit. Interesting. So I guess out of all the matches, um, you've had quite a few very long series, um, and you had quite a few very dominant series. Uh, did you have a, a favorite matchup that you played against in the tournament? Oh uh, yeah, I would say it was choices, man. The second time. The second series versus Choices. It was definitely a treat yeah. to watch, that's for sure. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so yeah, that was my favorite matchup, though, man. What was what was your favorite thing about it? What made it stand out to you? Oh, man, the way he just countered me, man. Like, he was just good matches, I believe, man. Like, he brought the right stuff to try to counter me, but, you know, luckily for me, I was able to you know, pull, pull out the wins, man. And um, on the first match we played, man, I was so upset, man. Because I had like the perfect build for him, and I I messed it up myself. Um, if you go back and watch the match, I had a recall in my hand and a recall on the ground, and I, I was just thinking too too far ahead, thinking too many too many moves ahead, man. So I had a recall in my hand. I'm thinking recall, then grab the recall on the ground, then do quantum decay. And right when I thought about quantum decay, I I pressed the button, man. Just thinking too much thinking, man. And I threw the whole match away and ended up being a draw. Interesting. And then the next match we played on City, I ran the same exact Arsenal, but it, and it worked perfectly. So, yeah. But yeah, he, he he was countering me. He was countering me well, man. So I mean, it, it was good, man. Well, he did, and it, it, he's always been a big fan of that silver bullet strategy. So perhaps that is the way to go versus that is the silver bullets, the the extra turbulences, and you know, trying to disrupt the aura. Yeah. Um, outside of your own matches, did you have a favorite matchup that you watched? In the 1v1 tournament? Let me see. Not really, man. I mean, they, they were all good, I think, man. I didn't I didn't really watch the lower tier players. You know, I didn't watch too many of their matches, just the, like the big names. I watched um, Sanks' matches. I watched um, Murder Macedon's matches. I watched Esper matches. You know, I, they, they were all pretty good, man. I, I didn't have a favorite. Is there any player in the 1v1 tournament that you didn't get to go up against that you wish you had? Hmm. Um, maybe, maybe um, Mr. Math or Murder Mastodon. Probably one of those two players. Very cool. Yeah, I think Murder and Sandal, some of those really good Arsenal builders, I think it would have been interesting uh, to see two of the really good minds of Phantom Dust go up against your Arsenal. Yeah. Kind of Kind of sad we didn't get to see that one. But in the end, you 110% earned your victory in the 1v1 tournament. Uh, absolutely phenomenal performance. And you know, even though there are other matchups I wish I could have seen or other players I wish I could have seen take a crack at the Arsenal, I can't say that anybody performed better than you did in that tournament. Well, I and appreciate so, it, man. Congratulations on the win there. Um, appreciate it. I guess we'll finish this up. Is there anything else you'd like to say to any of the tournament followers or Phantom Dust fans? Uh, same thing I said before when I won the, um, the final. Um, keep the community strong, man. You know, keep the game alive. You know, I really enjoy playing this game. It's really the only game I play, you know. There's not really too many other games that I play besides this game. So, you know, keep it alive, man. Keep it going. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and for some of your candid answers on the tournament. And I hope to see you in the next tag tournament and – Good luck there. And actually, I do got one more thing to say. Um, for anyone who's curious what I ran in the finals, I was going to post it, but then I thought not, not to, um, to post it because I didn't want Esper to think I was, like, showboating or taunting him. 
So, I mean, that's why I didn't post the Arsenals, which I was planning on doing. But I'll post them now for anyone who's curious what I ran against him. Okay, I'd be interested to see them myself. I know some others might be as well. Mm. But again, thank well, you yeah. for, for being here, and we'll look forward to seeing those Arsenals and seeing more of you in the next tag tournament, which seems to be more your style. Uh, maybe, man, maybe. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> All right. Well, take All care. All right, later, man.